Leave a while, you still can. Trust me. Cyberpunk 277. It's had a bit of a messy launch. Whether you've been playing the game on PC and you've not really had any experiences with bugs and you're finding that the graphics are actually pretty good, or if you're playing on PS4 or Xbox and you're actually enjoying the game despite those things, the base console release is clearly an absolute mess. Now, is the game actually entirely broken? No, it's, it's definitely not the worst release ever. Um, personally, I've had tons of, of bugs. Um, I, I've had uh, my trousers coming off when I look in the mirror. I've had uh, NPCs walking through me, NPCs' mouths not moving when they talk. I've had this encounter. My, what a sweet little f Kiss my dead spunk! My, what a sweet little face you have. Kiss my dead spunk! Feeling tired? Bored? My, what a sweet little anymore. face you have. Kiss my dead spunk! And she just, she just kept on repeating that. So, you know, um, I've also had the game just entirely freeze. Um, I've had the game crash. I've had enemies walk through walls. My character stuck in position while the rest of the game continues on. Floating items. I've, I've had pretty much all of the errors that, that you can imagine. But it's still mostly a pretty good game. Uh, mostly. I'll, I'll come back to that in a little bit. This video is mostly going to be made up of clips of glitches. That's more just because it's more entertaining to watch. Um, there's, there's plenty that's fine with the game, but I don't want to show anything too spoilery, and also the, the glitches are funny. I, I, in some ways I'm kind of enjoying them. So, yeah, there's that. But basically, I don't really feel massively let down like a lot of people seem to. And I think that comes down to the sort of the, the way that we respond to games being made in the first place and the relationship between the consumer and the and the dev team as well as the publisher. I never really get hyped for any game. I guess the closest that I got to that was uh, before Sekiro came out. I was really looking forward to it because because I, I trust From Software to deliver a good experience and uh, living in Japan I was interested to see like a take on uh, historic and mythological Japan. And I also wasn't a big fan of Neo, so I wanted to see that sort of game made made the right way. But yeah, as far as getting into hype, I I never really do that. I know what I want from a game, and I know which uh, companies I trust, and then occasionally, based on mostly screenshots, I will try a new game or a new company. Um, I never read up about a game before buying it. I never watch trailers. I, I just want the experience to be solely based on the minute that I start playing. I want to have like a fresh experience, um, which is sometimes hard to do, especially with uh, Cyberpunk. Uh, that, that game was everywhere. So I got little snippets hearing that some content was being cut, but because I wasn't expecting that content to be there in the first place, I wasn't really all that let down. Uh, such as the wall climbing blades, 
coming out of your arms. I heard that they got cut. I don't care. I really don't care. But yeah, it seems like this bizarre thing that there's no way to make the consumer happy right now. People complained and complained and complained that the game was being delayed. And now that it's finally out, people are complaining that it wasn't delayed long enough. There's... There's got to be something missing there. And it, it's it's not the company. It's not CD Projekt Red. It's it's the consumer. The way that you're like having these expectations is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, just let it be ready when it's ready. That's what they originally planned was it will be ready when it's ready. I know that they then said a release date and then had to push it back and then said another release date had to push it back but we why can't we just say okay that's happened I'll move on like I, I get the feeling that the response from the public before they even bought the game was just incredibly negative and that doesn't help the company make a better game that doesn't help the devs feel comfortable about what they're doing great people want the game and they're, they're eager to have it soon but the the attitude that the consumer base took was just abysmal and we seem to have turned into like these like man babies with cash that we're just throwing at the wall demanding different things all the time and demanding it now and it's just absolutely ridiculous the video game industry is continuously growing and expanding and we should be letting the developers create more freely without creating this horrible pressure on them to to have like groundbreaking memory making games that will last f with us forever but to have that done in like a split second or whatever some some crazy time frame because if anyone which i'm sure lots of people have tried to make their own game like unity is free you download unity i i bet so many people just give up straight away you know and the scale of the game that they're trying to make with these these big things like uh, cyberpunk you know it takes a lot of time and dedication and then technology improves as you go along and you've got to catch up to that the the demands that the consumer has is just absolutely ridiculous and I get it that even some people that work in the game industry might be complaining about this or people that have made indie games might complain about this but just the scope is far greater and the the constant pressure is far greater. CD Projekt Red aren't really a AAA studio. They are technically an independent studio. They're they're big and they're popular, um, but you know it's not the same as like Ubisoft or EA or you know Capcom. Capcom have had a great time recently. They've been making stellar games. Uh, they've had like an absolute return to form and you know what it's a massive company it's an absolutely massive company that's the sort of track record that they should be on whereas CD Projekt Red is essentially independent it needs more time and more breathing room and just the way that we're treating them is shocking absolutely shocking that being said, I do have issues with the game, and not just the glitches and the, the bugs and the horrible, horrible low le resolution. I guess, actually, no, one of the, the first things that I have to say negative about the game is to do with that low resolution. Bugs, I can, I can sort of forgive, but the game looks awful on a base console. And that's another thing where consumers are using the wrong terminology people are saying that the ps4 and the xbox whatever are last gen consoles whereas the ps5 and the xbox whatever are next gen consoles 
what happened to the current gen console? Surely the PS4 is the current gen. The, the PS5 has only just arrived. I know that PCs are steps ahead, like streets ahead in fact, but that's always PCs. I, I expect the PC one to look nicer, I expect it to run smoother if your PC can handle that. Cyberpunk just doesn't look good. It looks like I'm walking around with my glasses off. It looks like I'm walking around with my glasses off with butter rubbed all over my eyes. Like seriously, it looks bad. It looks awful. And there's kind of no excuse for the models looking so bad. I, I think that the game loads in really quickly, which is kind of bad, like the, the scope that they're going for. I expect to be sat waiting for that game to load and I have to go make a cup of tea, that's what I expect, like, you know, I I don't mind waiting for a game to load if it's going to be immersive once I'm finally there, but the, it just looks bad. It just, it just looks bad. And it's kind of heartbreaking to know that it looks like that. Uh, especially when sometimes I'll be walking through a story progression and the characters will be walking through an area and there's a part of my brain going, this isn't what it's meant to look like. There are five layers of detail missing right now and it's just kind of making me afraid to progress further into the story, uh, which is why I've been mostly just playing side missions. And here's my actual biggest issue with the game. The way that you play the game is kind of bad. I'm not just saying like the way that I'm playing the game is bad because I'm trying to mix it up every time that I play each mission. Like sometimes I'll go in with guns, sometimes I'll go in sneaking, sometimes I'll find a way onto the roof to sneak down that way. Um, Sometimes I'll try to just hack my way through everything. Sometimes I'll try to find the doors or the keys. I'm, I'm mixing it up as I go. It's not me playing the game. The way that the game plays is just not as interesting as I would have expected. And one of the reasons why, well, the main reason why, maybe the only reason why, is that the aggro range on the enemies is ridiculous. I might walk past just down the street and suddenly the game will just think that I want to be in this gunfight with the the next mini mission that I'm going to and it's kind of ridiculous because they're set up in like a shop for example and I'm supposed to believe that that shop doesn't let people in and if people walk near the shop that the people that work there want to murder everyone like that's that's ridiculous. Why is there no level of dialogue or being escorted out? Like, Hitman has a level where you just get escorted out, like a threat level, where they take you out and they talk to you about it first. That should be in there because right now it doesn't feel like I'm in an immersive world. It feels like I'm in a video game, which isn't really what you want when you're playing a video game. Sometimes you do, like Mario games, you want to feel like you're playing a fun video game, right? But for these like massive open world games that are meant to be really in-depth and filled with like interesting story and characters, I don't want to feel like this area is bad people zone and this area is empty NPC zone. Like, there's got to be some kind of blending between where, you know, like, people have to be saying something. There's got to be some kind of, like, interaction. I, again, I know that this comes down to the fact that CD Projekt Red is kind of an independent studio and to expect them to make, like, an actual real world is, is ridiculous. But there's other ways to fix that. The minimap could have red spots to uh, show where is like a no-go zone. But instead, it waits until you're into the no-go zone and tells you then. 
which is just ridiculous because again like i say sometimes it's just meant to be a shop um or like uh, mechanics and if i walk too close then the enemies just aggro and it's ridiculous i've also had occasions where the npc is meant to trigger to to start talking to me but instead they've just decided to start shooting at me which is i guess coming down to a glitch but oh my god <laughs> like it's it's saddening it's saddening also just tangentially not even tangentially just completely off topic entirely don't you think that a power gun should burst through something and a technical gun should ricochet seems a bit weird that that, that swapped around but you know you know maybe when i make my game i can i can fix that it feels like the role playing is actually being taken out a little bit which is a shame again in the story beats there's some good interesting role playing and uh your abilities and character style does play into what you can do and say which is really nice but the backstory that you had last like four minutes but no, it was just four minutes difference at the beginning, and then you just get kicked into the same old story as everyone else, which is fine. So yeah, with, with those holdbacks in like enemy aggro and just, yeah, almost entirely just the enemy aggro, but even some of the level design feels a little bit meh, and the way that you stumble into missions also feels a little bit there. I'm going to directly compare and contrast the game to Deus Ex, the latest one that came out. What was that? Hang on, it's on my shelf. Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Right, this game apparently didn't do so well, um, but it's a very similar setup. You know, you're in a city, uh, people are getting implants, some people are getting implants and going crazy. Um, the same sort of vibes of what makes you human, what doesn't make you human. The level design in Deus Ex Mankind Divided is tighter. You're in Prague in that game and you have similar abilities where you can hack into computers and you can climb up buildings and break into rooms and stuff and, and find your way around. But the thing is, it felt like in Mankind Divided that it was an actual city with people living in there and you could climb through rooms and stumble across new interesting things. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I climbed into a room that was just booby trapped to just blow up, like if anyone snuck into the room. Um, there was another mini mission that involved it involved it there was another mini mission that involved a cult that were all linked up to this woman that was connecting to their like neural network or something and i'm pretty sure i found that one as well just by going into someone's room and it's interesting like i felt like i was exploring but in cyberpunk 277 there's just a blip on on my map and I go to it and then someone phones me up and says hey can you do this thing that's boring that's really really boring <laughs> that's that's not discovering the world at all that is someone telling me to go here and do this and then leave and then go to another place and do this and then leave that's so boring that's so boring why why isn't it immersive why why aren't the stories being told in the game world i had one thing so, granted i've not played like hours and hours of cyberpunk yet but so far i've only had one thing that was an organic thing that i found and even that was a little bit glitchy the guy ran straight through me but it just felt like in deus ex that I was actually in a city and I was doing things whereas cyberpunk 
so far. It feels like I'm in a video game, and that's sad. That's a little bit sad. The game feels kind of sexist. Feels kind of sexist and maybe somewhat just bigoted in general. Um, it feels like the concept of being adult and being like mature content means that there needs to be naked women everywhere, which is just ridiculous. Like, why? Why? I get that you're trying to portray like an uncomfortable, sleazy future, but it's kind of not great to, to walk around and see all the time. Um, again, I, I'm not saying that it should be censored to create like this happy, fun world because that's not the world that it's meant to be. It is meant to be like a sleazy, horrible world. But there could be some of it toned down somewhat uh, or it could be balanced. There could be naked men. I'm not saying particularly that I want to see naked men, but you know, like, there's got to be just some balance, surely, because right now it just feels like, you know, a teenager's concept of what mature content should be. What happened to, like, philosophy and thinking? I remember when adult meant that the contents of, like, the movie or the game were just going to be, like, challenging and thought-provoking and maybe even somewhat a little bit boring. But now it just seems to mean explosions and sex, which is kind of ridiculous. Apart from aggressive AI, uh, I think the actual main problem with the game is the players, the people playing the game. And what I mean by that is that really everyone is getting way too hyped up and building up like these grandiose expectations it is still just a video game but please bear that in mind like it's it's a game it's a game with limitations like there's going to be limitations and with the way that technology is increasing every day and the expectations are just going higher and higher it's kind of impossible to expect an indie studio to make something that is beyond those limitations um, like we as a consumer just get so worked up about what we want and then if it's not exactly what we want we get angry about it and feel betrayed because we've created this own piece of media whether it be movie or game or TV show or whatever we build it up in our head and have like these great expectations and then when inevitably the the media can't meet the same standards as your fantasy people are just going absolutely crazy about it and causing more issue than there needs to be alternatively if the studio behind whatever media in this case video game is able to give like pretty much what you wanted then people will complain that it is exactly what they expected one of the best parallels is Star Wars if the new Star Wars movies were exactly the same as the original ones people complain because it's too similar um, which I actually agreed I agreed on that point and I, I'm sticking by that that uh, the seventh episode of Star Wars was boring because it didn't really do anything and a whole mess of problems with J.J. Abrams are, well, I'm not going to get into right now but I feel like almost every video I make I just decry J.J. Abrams don't support him anyway it was too similar and I, I agree with that on that point then Ryan Johnson got licensed to do basically whatever he wanted because there was no plan for those movies and he changed everything and people hated that as well so that's just evidence that if you do something new you're doomed if you do something that people expect you're doomed 
Um, I like the Ryan Johnson movie. That's that's a massive aside, but I I thought that it was, apart from a few major issues, uh, he had lots of limitations. Whatever, we're not talking about that right now. Basically, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, and the way that the audience is taking on these m like mediums is just utterly wrong. Like I said before, I don't really listen in to hype and I don't look at a game before I buy it. I base it on if it sounds good, um, bit of a, the, like Cyberpunk is a bit of a different one because I was interested years and years ago uh, after only hearing the name Cyberpunk. I was like, yes, I want that. I didn't know that there was a RPG. I didn't know anything about it. I just heard the title, Cyberpunk. And I was like, yep, I know I want that. I like the Cyberpunk setting. So I was on board straight away. And that's all I needed to know. I never watched any hype videos, never watched any trailers. I just played the game fresh off the bat. And why why is it so hard to do that? Why is it so hard to do that? Just how I, I don't understand how people can enjoy anything if they already know what to expect inside and also like if the that, that's that's the problem people people either know what to expect or have certain expectations built up by their hype and it just leads to them being disappointed because they either already know what's going to happen or they don't know and they're ruining it for themselves anyway Cyberpunk 2077 shouldn't have been released to PS4 on like in its current state. Uh, that's that's quite simple. It should have just been PC and next gen. Um, they should have held off until January. But it's the audience that basically made them <laughs> made them release it, right? Because people were complaining non-stop absolutely non-stop so if you don't like the game you've pretty much only got yourself to blame and that was a rhyme just for you I understand that in this video I've pretty much spoken indecisively uh, I've pretty much said that the game is a mess and that the game isn't a mess the main takeaway is that we are playing games the wrong way. We are not allowing the experience to happen to us. We are trying to navigate our own expectations into the experience and it doesn't always work like that. Um, but I will stand by the fact that there are definite disappointments in the game. Like it's not perfect, it's not awful, it shouldn't be on PS4. Uh, personally, I can enjoy the bugginess because I quite enjoy that, but it shouldn't really be released in this state. Um, again, that's it seems to be down to pressure from investors and from the audience just demanding it. So basically from here, what we should do is just wait for the patch and have positive expectations. We should allow them more time, which we didn't allow them beforehand, to continue to work on the game, which I have a pretty positive feeling that they will. Uh, it happened for No Man's Sky, and we can let it happen again now. Just let them have the time, and I'm sure the game will be fine in the end. I know it does kind of suck to not have the game immediately right now um, but we we are surrounded by so many games I'm looking at my bookshelf now I mean well my game shelf now and there's tons of things there and I know that it's the same for most of us right now we, we are overwhelmed with the amount of games I know that this was meant to be some like message from above of a game like it was meant to be like a savior 
But just, just hold on a little bit longer. I'm sure it'll be fine. Anyway, that's me. I just wanted to say this stuff because uh, everyone else is doing it. Cheers. So yeah, please um, feel free to support me on coffee. Like you can literally buy me a coffee. That that could be definitely what I spend my money on. Um, or you know, subscribe if you're not already. Uh, I'm gonna be making videos of either playing games or talking about games. So cheers. See ya.